Hello friends, in this video, uh, we're going to look at a question that was sent to me by uh, one of my nephew who lives in Bahrain. Her name is Karen. Okay. The question is like this. If tan x is equal to 3 quarters, but x is between pi and 3 pi by 2, find the value of sine x by 2, cos x by 2, and tan x by 2. Now to explain this question, I've drawn the graph of sine. This is the sine curve. This is the cosine curve. You know sine 0 is 0. Sine pi by 2 is 1. Sine pi is 0. So this is the red curve is the sine curve. And we know <coughs> cos 0 is 1. Cos pi by 2 is uh, 0 and so on. Okay. So I hope you understand pi. 2 pi is 360. So within 360 degree, sine starts at the baseline, reaches the maximum, hits the baseline, reaches the minimum, and back to the baseline. So this is one cycle. Hopefully you should know. You should be knowing this. And this is a cosine curve. Cosine is the complementary of sine. So I'm not going into much detail. So this is a cosine curve. Now, I have drawn these lines to show the four quadrants. So, this is called the, in the first quadrant, I explain, I'm talking about the unit circle. The first quadrant, sine is positive. Okay, our sine is positive in the first and the fourth quadrant. Sorry. Cos is positive in the first and the fourth quadrant. And it's negative in the second and the third quadrant. If you think about sine, sine is positive in the first and the second quadrant and negative in the third and the fourth quadrant. Now this is a tan graph. Okay, you know that this is this is pi by two. I forgot to write this is pi by two, this is pi, this is three pi by two, and this is two pi. Now those who don't know about pi, this is ninety, one eighty, two seventy, three sixty. So 10 has asymptotes at pi by 2, or 10 pi by 2 is undefined, or 10 90 is undefined, that's why. So this is 10. 10 is positive in the first and the third quadrant, and negative in the second and the fourth quadrant. <coughs> so these are the basic ideas. Now I've drawn a circle. Uh, to, sh to remember how to remember, now there's always a confusion. What, where is sine positive and where is cos negative. So this is a unit circle of radius 1. So there is an acronym. I made up a, if A stands for all, okay, S stands for sinners, okay, this is an acronym that I have made, all sinners to church. Okay, now let me highlight the letters that you're lo looking at. A, all, S for sinners, T for 10, C for cost. <coughs> so, in the first quadrant, all the three are, three are positive, sine, cos, and 10. In the second quadrant, only, co sine, only sine is positive. In the third quadrant, only, only 10 is positive. And in the fourth quadrant, uh, only cos is positive. So you may wonder why did how did I come about with this uh, acronym? This is I believe because there are other acronyms for this. There are some people who say remember like this: all science, science teachers are cool. Okay, but I like this: all sinners to church. Now you may wonder how did I get this? Uh, <coughs> it is because uh, I believe and understand. Uh, that a true Christian or a church-going Christian or and a Christ-believing Christian is a person who is sick and tired about his, sin, his or her sinful life and wants to do something about it. He realizes that he is a sinner and believes that Jesus Christ is the only person who can save him or her from his or her sin, sinful life. So the church is a place where every sinner should go. Uh, I'm a Christian, I'm a 
church going Christian. This is what I believe. I don't want uh, you to be offended by what I believe because uh, we all can believe different things, but we can be mature to agree to disagree. So church is not a place where some think that a perfect person goes. That's not at all the case. In reality, it is the, a church is a place where a person first accepts that he is sinful, does not want to live in sin, and seeks the help of Jesus Christ in that endeavor. So let us move on to the question. Hopefully, now this is that's my faith. Okay, so let us move on to the question. So 10x is this, and we want to find. So I will come to, now you may wonder why, why do I need this? Now, so let us look at the question. So we know this information that 10x is 3 by 4, a point. So let me draw a triangle now, <clears throat> a right angle triangle. I'll continue, I'll start from right angle triangle. So let me draw a right angle triangle. Okay, so let me draw it again. So this is a right angle triangle. Mm, what's happening? So let me draw it again, last attempt. Hopefully I should do it well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, I'll highlight it. Drag it up and make it a bit bigger. Okay. So, what, what do we know? So this is a right angle triangle. Okay. So say this is my X. So 10, you should know. We know what is that information that we have. 10 X is 3 quarter. So 10 is opposite over adjacent. So if you consider this as x, this is your 3 and this is your 4. And you should know that 3, 4, 5 is a right angle triangle. Okay, 3, 4, 5 is a right angle triangle. So what can we do now? So uh, can we say from this, uh, what is cos, what is cos x? Cos is adjacent, so this is, let me use a different color, this is my adjacent, this is my opposite, and this is my hypotenuse. So cos, cos x, oh, let me rewrite, let me use a different color, so let me use a blue. So cos x is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that is 4 fifths, okay? And we can say sine x is equal to 3 fifths. Okay, so now what can we do? Okay, so uh, now we're talking about x which is less than 90. So we're talking in the first quadrant. We're talking about x in the first quadrant. Okay, so, um, so how can we use this to figure out? Uh, sine x by 2. Okay, so what can we do? So what do we know? So you should know the double angle formula. So let me write the double angle formula. So the double angle formula, double angle formula. Okay, what do we know? Can we say that cos 2x, double angle formula, you can refer in your books, uh, in your formula sheet, cos 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Does it sound familiar? So sine 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So using this same principle, so can I say cos x? So look at the pattern. This is this x is half of this. So using the same principle, cos x can I write as 1 minus 2 sine squared x by 2, just like that. Now, what is cos x? So, we know cos x is adjacent over hypotenuse. So, can I say 4 fifth is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x by 2. So, if you make sine squared the subject, so can I write 2 sine squared x? is 1 minus 4 fifth. So I can say sine squared x or 2 sine squared x 
1 minus 4 fifth is 1 fifth. Sorry, I should have written x by 2. x by 2 here, x by 2 here. So, I can say sin squared x, sin squared x by 2 is 1 tenth. Okay. Now, when we think about, now we are talking the x that we are taking is between is in the third quadrant okay so what am I saying so this is what we are talking X is in the third quadrant so if you look at 10 and 0.75 would come here so let me draw that let me explain that so let me draw an arrow so this is a say this is one so 0.75 would come somewhere here Say here, this is 0.75. Oops. So from here, okay. So let me drop. I hope you can see. So you're talking about see 0.75 can come in the first quadrant and also in the third quadrant. So the angle that uh, the x that we have got is in the third quadrant. Okay, so we are we are starting with the first quadrant because the first quadrant and the third quadrant for tan is the same, but it's different for other trigonometrical ratio. So what have we got? So we have got sine sine squared x is equal to. So can I say sine squared x by two would be one over root ten. Okay. Now use your logic. If sine x is in the third quadrant, so if if x is in the third quadrant, where would x over two come? Okay, so let me come back to this. See, we are talking about x being in the third quadrant. So if you do half of any value of x in the third quadrant, suppose let us say, let us do the highest is two seventy. So what is half of two seventy? It's 135. Where does it come? It comes in the second quadrant. So if you take any value here and do the half of that, it will come in the second quadrant. So now we are we've got the answer. So we should write one or to correct this. This is plus or minus one tenth. Because yeah, I should remove the square here. I'm doing too many mistakes here. Okay, so if sine squared x by 2 is 1 tenth, sine x by 2 is plus or minus 1 over root 10. Now, I told you x over 2 will come in the second quadrant. So let us look at the graph. In the second quadrant, what is sine? Is it positive or negative? This is your sine graph. It's positive. So the answer, you've got two options. Out of the two options, we have to accept. So we can say sine is positive in the third quadrant in the third quadrant okay i didn't explain the quadrant now quadrant means this is the first quadrant this is the second quadrant this is the third quadrant this is the fourth quadrant okay so we can say it's in the third sorry we're talking about the second we started this so sine is positive in the second quadrant so out of two answers we have to accept the positive so sine x by 2 should be 1 over root 10 i'll continue in the next video see you in the next video